GPF denies ordering officers to fire on protesters. Esequibo man arrested for allegedly murdering ex-lover. Pork knocker killed in mining accident. Government allocates $51.7 billion in budget for healthcare sector. In the region, Argentina police protest to demand better pay and conditions. And internationally, United Nations global ceasefire resolution falters. Greetings and welcome to another edition of Channel 2 Headline News Update. I'm George Gonzalves. Thank you for joining us. The national budget, which was presented yesterday, allocated $51.7 billion or 15.7% of the total budget to the healthcare sector. According to Minister of Public Works Juan Edgel, $14.3 million of the money will be strictly for the procurement of drugs and medical supplies. The health budget will also go to the creation of smart hospitals in multiple regions, malaria control, immunizations, family health care, and $11 billion will go towards the Georgetown Public Hospital. The Ghana police force is denouncing a Facebook page for accusing the force of commanding its officers to fire on protesters in Berbice and on the West Coast. Here's more from Mr. Sobers. The Guyana Police Force is refuting claims from a Facebook blog page named Guyana News Network. According to the police, the blog published an article that, quote, is alleging that orders were given by Acting Deputy Commissioner Operations Clifton Hicken to shoot protesters at West Coast Burbies and East Coast Demerara. In response, the force administration clarified that no such orders were given to any of its ranks and further advises that the Guyana Police Force remains committed to its mandate as set out in Chapter 1601 of the Laws of Guyana, as well as its standard operation procedures which guide the use of force." End quote. The statement further went to call the article misinformation designed to create mayhem and call on authors of the blog to desist from such behavior as it is illegal. For Channel 2 Headline News, Esther Sobers. Thanks, Esther. The government has allocated $3 billion in the 2020 national budget to the housing sector. This allocation will go towards infrastructural development in existing housing schemes, land preparation for new housing schemes, and land acquisition. The PPP had made a campaign promise to house 50,000 citizens. It is hoped that the increased budget, as well as the inclusion of the private sector in the plan, will greatly aid in reaching this goal. Don't go away. Coming up after the break, pork knocker killed in mining accident and desequibo man arrested for allegedly murdering ex-lover. Contact us on 675-4379. I can call them now. Hidden treasures, discovering gems in young minds. Welcome back. The Guyana Police Force has issued a wanted bulletin for 30-year-old Elaz Ali Khan for questioning in relation to robbery committed on Rajmati Pandey on August 8, 2020 at La Jalousi, West Coast Temerara. 
Anyone with information that may lead to the arrest of Elaz Ali Khan is asked to contact the police on telephone numbers 227-2603-911 or the nearest police station. Police investigators in the Esquibo Coast community of Golden Fleece have arrested a man for stabbing to death his ex-lover over a telephone call she received. Here is Bibi Vakas with that story. One resident of Golden Fleece, Esquibo, was arrested after allegedly stabbing his ex-girlfriend to death over a phone call late last evening. The two had broken up, but he claims to have come over to her house to make up with her. Sometime after, 24-year-old Lenisha Peters allowed him into the home located in Sparendam, she received a phone call. After claiming to have heard a man's voice on the phone, the jealous ex-lover reportedly grabbed a knife from the kitchen and stabbed her repeatedly. Hearing the commotion, Peters' aunt, who was in the house, immediately ran for help. Peters was taken to the Saudi hospital where she was pronounced dead on arrival. For Headline News Update, Bibi Bakker. Thanks, Bibi. Yesterday, a miner was crushed to death by stones during a work accident at Whitewater Mountain, Kanawaruk, Bakdam, in Region 8. Dead is 59-year-old Donston John, also known as Rambo of St. Francis Mission, Maikoni River. At the time of his death, he was working at the mining site with three other pork knockers. While working below the edge of a hill, several large rocks loosened and fell on him. The other three men were left unharmed. The police visited the scene and escorted the body to the Madia Regional Hospital where it was pronounced dead on arrival. Coming up after the break, Cuba denounces media blockade on COVID success and United Nations global ceasefire resolution faltered. Contact us on 675-4379. I don't call them no. Hidden treasures, discovering gems in young minds. Welcome back. The government of Cuba denounced what it called a media blockade at the international level on the country's success in confronting the COVID-19 pandemic. In a message on Twitter, Cuba's foreign minister Bruno Rodriguez said the scientists on the Spanish-speaking communist island shared their advances with the world, showed protocols against the pandemic and results of the vaccine candidate. However, this was not reported. Cuba is the only country in Latin America with a COVID-19 vaccine candidate in a clinical trial that has been approved by the World Health Organization. On Thursday, Cuban experts exposed advances in the vaccination for COVID-19 when they appeared before representatives of the Pan American Health Organization. Argentina's president is urging police officers to stop protesting over better pay and working conditions. 
many officers say they have been struggling to make ends meet as the country battles through its third year of recession. Al Jazeera's Teresa Bow reports. These police officers belong to the largest force in Argentina. They have been protesting for days, demanding better salaries and work conditions. Mariana Montero has been an officer for 16 years. She says her family can barely survive. I make 43,000 pesos a month. This is a wage that leaves my family below the poverty line. Before the pandemic, we were able to make some extras, but now we don't have any extra money and it's tough to sustain my family. This officer, who did not want his name mentioned, says he needs to pay for his own equipment. This gives us some money for our clothes, but the price is four times what they give us. We have expired bulletproof jackets. Everything is wrong. So this week, for the first time, police officers are taken to the streets. They're demanding a 56 percent salary increase. COVID-19 has increased the pressure on government employees like doctors, the police, among others who say they're working non-stop and cannot make ends meet. Argentina has one of the highest inflation rates in the world, is in a deep economic crisis. And that's why these people here say they urgently need a race. Government officials told Al Jazeera that some of those involved in the protest are under investigation for crimes committed during service and could be suspended. And that's why they're trying to create chaos. A group of officers showed up outside the presidential residence. Many perceived their presence there as a threat to Argentina's institutions. President Alberto Fernández said this is not the time to put security at risk and announced he was redistributing national resources to assist the province of Buenos Aires. What I am thinking is how many citizens are now left without security or how many are left at the mercy of those who commit crimes. This is not the way, I tell you honestly. I hope you reflect and stop this. And I'm sensitive to the demands of these officers because it is clear that they have been left behind in regards to their salaries and we must give them an answer. But the protesters say they just need better wages at a time where hardship has become the norm. Teresa Bo, Al Jazeera, Buenos Aires. And internationally. The United Nations Security Council has heard from top UN officials on the state of the world's conflict zones. Despite a resolution in July calling for a, quote, global ceasefire, truces in the world's conflicts have faltered, and the lack of a coordinated international response has plunged countries like Yemen deeper into despair as the coronavirus pandemic took hold. Al Jazeera's Kristen Salumi reports. Conflict-afflicted countries like Yemen are among the most vulnerable to COVID-19, a situation exacerbated by the lack of a strong, coordinated international response. That was the takeaway from top UN officials briefing the Security Council Wednesday. All this will reinforce existing grievances and give succor to those with an agenda of restricting rights and liberties, as well as to extremist groups and other criminal groups seeking to take advantage of the pandemic. So the risks of conflict, instability, insecurity, violence and population displacement are rising. Humanitarian Chief Mark Lowcock says economic support for these crisis hit countries has been tepid at best, although calls for unity and decisive action have yielded little. I am calling for an immediate global ceasefire in all corners of the world. Secretary General Antonio Guterres first called for a ceasefire in March, but it took the council months to follow up with a resolution making it official. Since then, temporary truces have faltered, humanitarian crises have worsened, and the U.S. has withdrawn support, financial and otherwise, from the World Health Organization. The WHO needs to reform, including by demonstrating its independence from the Chinese Communist Party. That lack of independence transparency and accountability is why President Trump made the decision for the United States to withdraw from the WHO. China, for its part, accused the U.S. of undermining international efforts to fight the virus. Uh, it's obvious the U.S. representative was absolutely abusing the Security Council platform, was abusing today's meeting. They are spreading political virus 
what they are doing here is simply to serve their domestic politics. Disagreement over the WHO's role in the pandemic is what delayed the Security Council's call for a 90-day humanitarian truce the first time around and could complicate efforts to extend the ceasefire. One thing is certain, according to UN officials, a lack of international response will just lead to more conflict and insecurity. Kristen Salumi, Al Jazeera, the United Nations. That's all for our regional and international news. Here is your three-day weather forecast. That's all for this edition of Channel 2 Headline News Update. Tune in Friday at 7 p.m. for another episode. Be sure to subscribe, like, and follow us on Facebook and YouTube. Or visit our website at headlinenewsghana.com for all the news we couldn't fit in the newscast. Until then, take care.